Hey everybody, it's your man James, back again with another new comic book review for you for today. Um, today we're going to look at The Futurists from Allegiance Arts by uh, Patrick Stiles, Butch Geis, and Rick Magyar. Uh, this series is about a basically a quest where some soldiers are uh, trying to find this mythical city of Shambhala and the one who is the leader of the group is looking to, to gain basically immortality and he ends up having to, to uh, fight against one of his own men that uh, turns against him for this and uh, becomes sort of a, uh, a foil to his plans and uh, this is the continuation of that. Um, we pick up where we left off last time where uh, our hero Theodore Gunn aka Teddy uh, was about to kill the the uh, leader of the troops that he was a part of, who's behind all of this, who killed many men to try to cover things up and to keep the secrets of Shambhala for himself. And he ends up having to uh, go on the run himself. You know, he's now a, a traitor. And, you know, we get it right here, you know, you know, with his wife. Stop. Even if we could escape, I I can't. Is it true? Did you kill that soldier? No. I mean, yes. But if I hadn't, it'd be me who's dead. Quinlan's trying to hide what he did. What he's looking for. Shambhala, that's what he said. Shambhala, Teddy, you're not making any sense. I, then I'll make sense of it. I have to. Quinlan massacred scorers to keep, a, keep it secret. I have to find what Quinlan's after and either destroy it or destroy him. He'll come after me, after us, if I don't. And he ends up having to go on the run alone, leaving his wife behind, you know, and we learn, you know, what about our daughter? What will I tell Hannah? So we all go 10 years into the future. And we're here at a sort of like a basically a Catholic school for girls and we get to finally meet Teddy's daughter for the first time. And as you can see, you know, there's even back in, uh, Back in the mid-19th century, you know, you had mean girls, and that's exactly what she deals with here. You know, they're always teasing her for her father, saying that he's a traitor, saying that, they, you know, it it's, makes her the, the daughter of a traitor. And, you know, as you can see, uh, Hannah doesn't take too kind to that. So uh, we get some uh, some cat fight action going on, you know. it's And as you can see, Hannah's, uh, Hannah's not... Uh, not too shabby when it comes to fisticuffs. You know, must take after her father, I guess. Even uh, even the nuns get a little uh, a little bit of that action to them, you know? Broken nose. So she's hauled before the uh, headmaster of the school, but he actually takes a little bit of pity on her, uh, showing uh, more consideration to her than the girl who was teasing her. She finds out that uh, he has a package that was given to him in secret probably coming from his, her father, and says that, you know, as long as she, uh, she toes the line, you know, at the end of the semester, he'll give it to her. But, of course, you know, you can't walk away clean after a fight, you know. Hold on there, lass. I hope you don't think you'd get away with fighting that easily. I'll have you mopping latrines until your hands look like an old maid's. And that's exactly what she ends up doing. And while she's doing that, she has some kind of a a vision or a image that comes to her and she doesn't understand what's going on and then the mean girls return you know you're lucky the headmaster feels sorry for you but you're not getting off that easy so people keep saying daughters of traitors don't belong here they don't belong anywhere we're coming for you Hannah best watch yourself and come for her they do, but uh, Hannah has set up a, a little surprise for them. You know, a little, uh, a little plan that she had of her own. You know, always good to see the bully get to come up and say deserve. Meanwhile, the headmaster uh, finds out, huh? The cupboard is open. I'm certain I locked Hannah's package and the necklace too. They're gone. <sighs> Hannah... Just whatever are you planning, girl. 
and we find out that what was in the package is a compass that her father sent her to help him help her to find him and so that's exactly what she plans i'm coming father i'll find you i swear it and then uh, after all this we had a few months in the in, in uh, from that and we see teddy himself he meets with this sort of mystic you know in uh, in india trying to get a coin that he has which will help him in his quest to find Shambhala and stop, you know, the, the, the colonel he he turned against. And the guy says, you know, that he, he knows he tried to steal, had this coin stolen, you know, and Teddy, Teddy tries to play it off. I don't know what you're on about, Nag. Why would a one-handed man like me steal from a man who makes hand trophies? I'd have to be daft. You know, there's, according to your associate, you are bring out the prisoner and so we find out that you know in fact he did send somebody to uh, try to get that coin and steal it and you know he basically tells him if you don't tell me the truth this guy loses his hand and I need every hand I can get and we see uh, Teddy now has a prosthesis where his arm that he lost in the uh, first issue was so um this, uh, this actually furthered the story a lot better than the first issue did. You know, you get, you get, to, you get to meet basically all your main players. You know, the, the Colonel, Quinlan, you know, Teddy, his wife, Hannah, the daughter. You know, it's, it's, it's a, lot, a lot more focused than the first issue was. I think the first issue tried to cover too much at once, whereas this one was a lot more focused. Although we didn't see any of the, uh, the uh, mystics that we saw in the first issue, but that's that's okay, I don't mind that. Those guys were probably the least, my least favorite part of the story. You know, now we got the focus of the quest to find Shambhala. You got Teddy looking for that. You got his daughter looking for him. You got Quinlan looking for for uh, Shambhala. It's, it's a race. I kind of like that about it. You know, Geis's art, as always, is beautiful. I mean, you know, just even this, you know, right here. Let me just look at that. You know, stabbing him through the leg and it's, it's, you know, great guys always does go where you're just beautiful. And again, look at this, the wife's, the, 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 the sheer, the sheer horror, the sheer, you know, distress in his wife's face, you know, very well done. You know, guys always does great work. He do, although in this issue, he does have a few, a few little missteps here and there, like this shot here. I mean, look at her, look at her nose. It looks a little, uh, looks a little off. And there's a, there's a few things like that. And there's a few, uh, a few pages where uh, the detail isn't as, as good as it should be. Like, you know, this, this page here, you can see the last, last issue, the architecture was very nicely drawn here. It looks a little more, a little more unfinished, a little more rough. Probably, uh, probably time constraints trying to uh, make deadlines, you know, it tends to happen. But, uh, you know, but then he pulls it out. When he pulls out an image like this, him and Magyar, they're a, they're a good team. They do a lot of, do a lot of good work, you know, great, great splash image, great, you know, cliffhanger moment you know with the revelation of, of his uh, prosthesis um overall I'm, I'm i'm still interested in this I, I i wasn't sure after the first issue but i'll definitely give this one uh, a mild recommend i give it you know um 6.5 out of 10 it's it again it's, it's still got some work to do there's still a few little hiccups here and there but overall i'm really enjoying it um i love guys's art i always have you know since since I first saw his work back in the 80s when I first started reading comics. So, you know, I, and this is just, you know, very well done work. Um, style story, like I said, he's getting a better focus going on things now. And I like that, you know, focus on the, the quest. A focus on, you know, people people out there trying to connect and, and, and get to Shambhala. So I'm, I'm really eager to see where that goes. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's definitely an improvement over the first issue that I was a little more hesitant on, but I'm glad I stuck it out for this issue because this was definitely uh, better than the first. And hopefully they can keep this momentum going and uh, bring the series to, uh, to something uh, I can really, uh, really enjoy and recommend even even more strongly. So uh, mild recommend. Um, you know, again, if you like Geis's art, if you want a story that's got some mysticism and some some good action, you know, this will this will probably do do good for you here. And, uh, you know, just check it out if you get a chance. And, uh, you know, again, not, not the best Allegiance art book, but 
definitely it's 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 improving, and I, I can only hope that uh, future installments will continue that upward trend. So that'll about do it for this review. Um, if you like what you heard, give me a like down there and throw me a comment. If you didn't like what you heard, uh, drop a comment anyway and let me know what you thought because I always want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, make sure to smash that subscribe button so you never miss another review or anything else here on the channel. And until next time, take care.